This is my new Champion dual fuel uh, generator. It runs on propane or gasoline. And uh, I just got it delivered. But um, it runs 9,000 watts peak on gasoline or 7,000 watts continuous uh, running power. Uh, when it's running on propane, it runs 8,100 watts peak or 6,300 watts uh, continuous. Um, this one I got because the last time we had a flood, uh, it was kind of hard to get gasoline, so I had to be very selective on what I ran the gasoline generator on and how many times I ran it a day. And we were without uh, power for over a week. And the roads were washed away and I couldn't get new gasoline to put in the generator. So I got this one to hook up to my 500 gallon pro propane tank and uh, that should give me uh, quite a few weeks of uh, generator time uh, running on it. It's about four hours at 50% load, uh, or five hours I believe, uh, running on propane at 50% load. So on four gallons of it. Uh, so I'm going to open this box up and see what's inside of it and what we have to put together to, to get it working. So this is the accessory box that's inside of the package when you open it. It has some 1030 motor oil. A little funnel, which is kind of nice because you need know, to get a funnel. This is the... Um, front foot for the generator and then it has two tires these are solid foam tires so they don't need to be inflated here's the propane regulator and hose it's about three feet long and then the bolts for the wheels and the float regulator and it looks like the bolts for the uh, front feet and this nice power cord which has two circuit breakers on it so it has two 20 amp plugs on this side two 20 amp plugs on this side and this is the side that plugs into the generator which is a L1430P so so <clears throat> when I went to open the box for the generator. I uh, ran my knife around the corners of the box so I could fold the box down, but the frame of the generator is right at the edge of the box, so I actually cut into the paint on the generator frame. So if you're going to open the box, be careful not to do that. Open it with a knife. Alright, so I put the uh, two wheels on the unit, and then I put the front feet, which just has two uh, bolts to put the uh, front feet on. The bolts are here and on the other side of this um, engine mount. And so one of the things I want to show you before I put oil in here is this really nice uh, oil drain tube they put in here. So you just unconnect it from this mount and drop the hose down and it will drain the oil out of the, the motor without having to to uh, fight with trying to get a funnel up under here. So I'm going to fill it with oil. So I just filled this with oil and there's uh, probably a good three or four ounces left in this uh, container and it's still... Uh, um, I would not fill your uh, oil all the way up with the bottle because it's completely full with um, about three or four ounces left in the container. So you should be careful when you're filling it with the oil they supply. Alright, to start this thing up for the first time, I'm just going to hook it up to one of the barbecue tank propane tanks. Um, this is the propane inlet, and this little valve here switches you between gasoline and propane. So you want to be in this position so that you're running on propane. And I'm going to put the hose that they supplied on here and Hook it up. Alright, so we're going to fire this thing up for the first time. I'm going to turn the propane tank on. Always open the valve all the way. And then there's a little on selector here. So you got to turn the fuel on here. And I'm going to turn the power on here. 
Oop, sorry, that was the start switch. This is the power on switch. And the light lit up. And let's see how this thing starts. Uh, I may need to choke it, but I'm going to just try starting it without uh, choking it first. So I want it to kick over. Alright, so we're going to try and set the choke on it. The choke is over here on the side. And it looks like... Oh, it looks like it's already choked, so let's uh, turn it to run mode and try that real quick. Just to see if uh, it'll start with it in run mode. So I just let it run for about 10 minutes and then um, shut it down. But I'm going to check the oil and make sure that the oil level is correct before I uh, let it run for any longer to break it in. So let me do that next and then we'll start it back up. So I'm just checking the oil to make sure it's good and it's right up to the bottom of the thread. So. I would recommend when you fill it up with the bottle they supply that um, you don't fill it up all the way and you check it as you're filling it because I would have definitely overfilled this thing if I would have used all the oil in the bottle. And uh, I'm assuming maybe this unit had a little oil left in it from the factory is why it, uh, it didn't use all the oil in the bottle. I would assume that it would have set the bottle size for the, uh, for the machine. Because it's kind of an odd amount. It's 1.1 liters, uh, 30, 37 fluid ounces. So, anyways, what I was saying about this display while it was running, and you probably couldn't hear me, was the first thing displayed is the AC voltage of the generator, and this one was running around 247 volts AC. And the frequency was the second thing displayed. The AC waveform frequency was running around 62 hertz. But when this thing is fully loaded, it will probably drop down to about 60, 59 hertz. So that's fine, running at 60, 60 uh, 2 hertz when it's unloaded. And the third item is the actual runtime. So you know when to change the oil based on the runtime on this display. It comes in handy. And the other nice thing is these have these nice weather tight uh, power connections on the front of the panel. And you have a 120 30 amp outlet, a 120 slash 240 30 amp outlet. So that gives you the four connections. There's ground and then two hots and a neutral. So, and then these 20 amp uh, household plugs are kind of nice. And then there's circuit breakers for each one of them. And this input here is for the uh, float charger. And, um, I'm going to go ahead and fire it up and let it run for a while and then let it break in. So I'm going to turn the propane bottle back on and turn the power back on to the circuitry and then give it the start. Yeah, and let's give it another start. I'm wondering if you need to choke it to run it on propane, but let's choke it and then try starting it.
So I'm your typical guy and I don't read the instruction manuals. So uh, when I get something new, I just like to play with it. But to start it on propane, it does need to be set at 75% choke to start it when you're starting electrically. So that's one thing I got to learn about using a propane generator. So anyways, it's going to run for the next hour or so. I'm going to let it break in and then we'll hook it up to a load later on and see how it works. Thanks for watching. second day I've had this generator and uh, we happened to have a big snowstorm this morning that took power out and um, it's been snowing really hard and the winds have been high and I took the generator up and it's been running the house for the last two hours and I expect the power to be out longer today so we'll see how she does today. So far, pretty flawless. It runs the uh, well that I have that's 650 feet underground, and uh, that's a one and a half horsepower pump. And it's not complaining at all. 